The powerful imperial Qing dynasty was the longest and last ruling dynasty in China. The dynasty held power for more than 250 years and was mostly successful until an opium crisis and quarrels with the British weakened its economy and government. The First and Second Opium Wars are often considered the beginning of the end of the Qing dynasty. After its fall, the structure of China's economy, government, and relations with foreign powers would drastically change. Welcome back to the Top Trendy Info channel, if it's your first time here please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for fast hand info as they happen. The main opium war was quite possibly the earliest significant occasion that prompted the fall of the Qing tradition realm. Before the beginning of the conflict in 1839, the Qing tradition would do well to command over its exchange relations with outside nations. It created a wide range of luxury goods and tea, which were highly sought after. Their dominance in creating silk, tea, and porcelain permitted the Qing tradition to have an effective economy, making China perhaps of the most well-off country. In any case, the carrying of opium by English shippers made the Qing line let completely go over its kin and organized exchange strategies. In the mid-19th century, the opium exchange turned into a colossal issue for the Qing line. When the main opium war started, a huge number of Chinese individuals were dependent on the substance. Opium was lawfully imported and exchanged China preceding the 1820s. Nonetheless, the huge scope dependence on opium raised concerns. The opium exchange was adversely influencing the Qing administration's economy on the grounds that the Chinese were utilizing silver to pay for the opium. There was a lopsidedness in exchange relations among China and England. China delivered products that were sought after in England, explicitly tea. Nonetheless, English traders needed to utilize silver to pay for Chinese merchandise since Chinese shippers weren't keen on the items that England brought to the table. The East India Company and British merchants turned to selling Indian opium to the Chinese in exchange for their goods to reduce the amount of silver leaving Britain. This caused the price of silver to go up, ultimately leading to higher tax payments in China. Opium bans that prohibited the use or importation of the substance were implemented in the 1820s and 1830s in an effort to put an end to the addiction crisis, but British merchants continued to bring opium into China illegally. There was little change in the quantity of opium chests brought into China in the initial 20 years of the 19th century. At the point when boycotts were set up to stop the opium exchange, the quantity of opium chests brought into the nation raised from around 4,244 chests in 1821 to 18,956 chests by 1831. The quantity of opium chests imported dramatically increased by the next 10 years. The boycotts executed to stop the opium emergency came past the point of no return. The Qing tradition had proactively lost critical command over its economy and individuals. After the main opium war, China had to open up a greater amount of its exchanging ports to England and other outside nations and needed to pay compensations. The Qing administration's fruitless endeavors in the subsequent opium war additionally added to its unavoidable defeat. Scotland conceived English dealer William Jardine was a vital figure in organizing an activity plan for England to wage the primary opium war against China. Alongside his accomplice James Matheson, Jardine laid out Jardine and Matheson Company, which turned into a significant importer of opium in China. Discontent with the Qing line's endeavors to get serious about the unlawful smuggling of opium, Jardine persuaded English government authorities and the public that war was essential because of the harm the Chinese had caused with their prohibitive exchange arrangements and seizure of thousands of chests of English opium. By the mid-1830s, strains among China and English dealers uplifted. Chinese authorities accountable for controlling medication dealing at exchanging ports made English vendors liable for pirating opium be ousted from the country. Exceptional Royal Magistrate Lin Zexu was named by the sovereign to assume command over the unlawful opium exchange. 
Zexu composed a letter to Sovereign Victoria mentioning her mediation to hold her subjects back from directing criminal behavior on Chinese soil. Nonetheless, the letter never arrived at Sovereign Victoria. By the spring of 1839, Zexu turned to isolating English dealers and other unfamiliar networks and seized in excess of 20,000 chests of opium. English dealers looked for repayments for their seized opium from Parliament, yet English government authorities felt that if anybody somehow happened to pay compensations for the obliterated opium chests, it ought to be the Chinese government. Jardine managed to conjure up support for a war. He met with Foreign Secretary Lord Palmerston to suggest a number of conditions that Britain should demand in the result of victory. In March 1840, Parliament voted on sending British naval forces to China, and a vote of 271 to 262 secured the decision. The First Opium War ended in a British victory, with death tolls of Chinese troops exceeding 20,000 and about 500 for the British. In August 1842, the war concluded with the signing of the Treaty of Nanking, which reflected many of the conditions that Jardine had introduced to Lord Palmerston. Preceding the main Opium War, foreign merchants were simply permitted to trade with Chinese authorities called Hong merchants, who implemented trading rules and guidelines. Foreign merchants were simply permitted to get to the exchanging port of Canton, or advanced Guangzhou. The arrangement constrained China to open up extra ports to unfamiliar exchange, including Shanghai, Ningpo, Amoy, and Fuchao. China likewise surrendered the island of Hong Kong to England and had to pay repayments for the obliterated opium chests and the conflict. The details of the settlement of Nanking at last undermined China's prohibitive way to deal with Western trade relations. In spite of coming to an understanding following the main opium war, China was as yet threatening toward England because of its misfortunes. England was additionally developing more disappointed with the Qing administration's absence of adherence to the new guidelines set out by the arrangement of Nanking. Thus, England sent troops to the urban areas of Guangzhou and Tianjin to start an assault in 1856. The subsequent Opium War was a significant clash for the Qing line to win in light of the fact that a misfortune would mean extra loss of exchanging ports and more openness to Western colonialism. Be that as it may, Chinese powers were no counterpart for English soldiers, which were likewise supported by the French. Amidst the subsequent Opium War, other unfamiliar powers looked for the very concessions that England had triumphantly asserted following the primary conflict. France, Russia, and the US met with Chinese authorities in Tianjin to sign a progression of settlements in 1858, which conceded them the very concessions that England was permitted. These series of arrangements became known as the inconsistent deals since they constrained China to go into an open exchange framework, which added to China's animosity toward Western powers. While attempting to keep up with what guidelines port urban areas China actually had full command over, the Qing administration was additionally endeavoring to stifle social agitation that brought about the Taiping insubordination of 1850. At this point, the Qing tradition had wound up in a condition of complete chaos. The subsequent Opium War finished in a misfortune for the Qing tradition in 1859, with revisions to the deal of Nanking and the confirmation of extra arrangements haggled among China and the Western powers. The Qing administration was established by semi-traveling people groups called the Manchus, who figured out how to unseat the already prevailing Ming line from the lofty position. Also to their defeat of the Ming administration, the Qing line would be debilitated by friendly agitation and disobedience because of its unsatisfied and rankled residents. The Taiping resistance was a 14 drawn out uprising that extraordinarily impeded the Qing tradition's capacity to not just resuscitate from its misfortunes in the First and Second Opium Wars yet in addition deal with individuals were experiencing because of the domain's monetary flimsiness. The Taiping insubordination was driven by Hong Xiuquan, who had dreams to make an idealistic culture he alluded to as the realm of radiant harmony. Xiuquan had wanted for a superior life for workers, which assisted him with conjuring up help and urged large number of laborers to join his development. Toward the beginning of the resistance in 1850, 
under 30,000 Taipings were engaged with the development. Notwithstanding, these numbers developed to multiple million dissidents by 1853. Taiping rebels effectively caught Nanking and figured out how to keep down the Qin tradition from stifling the insubordination until 1864. It's assessed that something like 20 million individuals passed on because of the disobedience, making it perhaps of the bloodiest nationwide conflict ever. Qin tradition powers at last stifled the disobedience and recaptured control, however the expenses of the insubordination far offset the Qin's triumph. Alongside a huge number of lives lost, the Qin line was left with a lot of farmland obliterated and helpless before England and France, who loaned their tactical help in stifling the disobedience. The Qin dynasty was hit with another rebellion in late 1899, known as the Boxer Rebellion. Members of the Chinese secret society called the Righteous and Harmonious Fists, or Yehechuan, were responsible for starting the uprising. The group became known as the Boxers by Westerners due to their practice of martial arts. The rebellion wasn't directed towards the Qing dynasty but rather foreigners in China. However, it would still have a major impact on the dynasty because several groups of foreigners ultimately succeeded in crushing the rebellion, leading to more reparations. More than 50,000 Boxers invaded Beijing in an attempt to expel or execute foreigners. A military coalition to put down the Boxer Rebellion formed the Eight-Nation Alliance, which consisted of forces from the US, Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Russia, and Austria-Hungary. Qing Empress Dowager Cixi was forced to choose a side in the rebellion and decided to support the Boxers. This was seen as a formal declaration of war, which put her in danger of the Eight-Nation Alliance military coalition. The Empress fled Beijing to Xi'an to seek refuge, and the rebellion ended in 1901 with the defeat of the Boxers. Once the Eight-Nation Alliance crushed the rebellion, Empress Dowager Cixi signed the Boxer Protocol, which forced the Qing dynasty to take responsibility for the reparations. The agreement also forced the Qing dynasty to execute Chinese government officials who provided aid to the boxers, and foreign troops were placed in the nation's capital of Beijing. By the turn of the 20th century, the once strong domain of the Qing line was corrupted with an opium dependence emergency, various conflict repayments, monetary flimsiness, and social turmoil. Consistent disturbance made the domain lose a lot of its capacity to Western government and over individuals once upheld the tradition. The Chinese transformation of 1911, or the Xinhai unrest, was the last revolt that would formally end the Qing administration's rule. The effective defeat of the Qing tradition by progressives in the conflict eliminated the magnificent framework that China had kept up with for over 2,000 years. The Republic of China was laid out, However full acknowledgement of the new government wouldn't come until the Chinese insurgency of 1949 drove by Mao Zedong. The 1949 insurgency laid out individuals Republic of China under Mao Zedong. The First and Second Opium Wars are key bits of China's set of experiences since they started a progression of disturbances that changed the Qing tradition's economy and the design of its supreme power. The Qing tradition never completely recuperated from the repercussions of the Opium Wars. The struggles made social agitation due the realm's devastating economy. The large numbers of passings coming about because of the conflicts and uprisings put further weight on the Qing administration to sort its country back out. Six-year-old Head Puai had to relinquish the lofty position in mid-1912. In the many years that followed, China would briefly lose its conciliatory relations with the US and regions that the Qing line had gained and be dependent upon more political disturbance. Kindly keep following for more updates. Tell us what you think about this on the comments section and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.